Settings are a bitch. Configure them once, configure them right, go get killer shots. Now, there's lots of them out there, but this video puts it all together. What settings to use, where to find them, exactly how to set them up, when to use them, and why to use them. Title says film making, so no photo stuff. It's not camera plus external monitor, it's just camera. You get lost every setting in the description, including picture profiles. But this is a client work configuration. Will it work for YouTube? Yeah. Okay, I know you're going to ask. This is the A7 III and this is a carbon fiber skin. Lens, 24-70 f2.8 GM, VND, 2-5 to five stops. Firmware, 310, the latest at this point in time. We pre-configure two movie modes. Number one, 4K 24p, real time for any shot. Number two, full HD 120p, slow motion. For details, close-ups, medium shots predominantly. Top mode dial, movie. Gets you the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, constant audio level display, and every video relevant overlay. Exposure compensation dial at zero. It's just good form. Exposure mode, manual exposure. Full control. File format, XAVCS 4K. Highest resolution, best quality. You can crop into the image in post to reframe a shot, and you can render stellar Full HD from 4K. Record setting, 24p, 100 megabits. Highest data rate per second, most color information, best for post-production and grading. Now, if the omega to an image is the grade, the alpha is the exposure. Shutter speed, 1 50th, 1 over roughly double the frame rate for natural motion blur. F-stop, lowest possible, my case 2.8. You get an f1.4 lens, your case f1.4. You're getting the most dramatic depth of field characteristics, aka background blur. Background is a story tool. You don't want to kill it off completely all the time. ISO, lowest possible. My case 125, because of the picture profile I'm using. Low ISO means less noise, means cleaner image, means easier in post. Five years ago, autofocus sucked. Not today, understand it. Use it. Autofocus drive speed. Normal. Natural focus transitions. Easy on the eye. Autofocus tracking sensitivity. Responsive. In combination with the right autofocus area, kills it 95% of the time. Should the autofocus be distracted, go to standard or use manual focus. Focus mode. Continuous autofocus. Performs like a champ. Or manual focus. In case the autofocus fails or to precisely time rack focus. First main menu. Submenu number six, third option, face slash eye autofocus settings. Face slash eye priority in autofocus on. Subject detection human or animal for monkeys, both will work. Face detection frame display on. Animal eye display on. White balance, three option. Number one, speed option using a preset. Like for example, daylight. There's no artificial lights, you're set for the day. Number two, Match option, a specific Kelvin value. Know the color temperature of your lights in Kelvin. Match that number inside the camera. Match for the key light if you have lights of different color temperatures. Number three, precision option. Place a gray card right where your subject would be and measure using the camera. Select the custom white balance, aim at the gray card and hit the center button. And there you go. Perfect white balance setup for the specific situation you're in. Custom function buttons. Second main menu, eighth submenu, second entry. Custom key for video. Focus first. AF on button. Autofocus, manual focus, control, toggle. Fast switching between autofocus and manual focus. Auto exposure lock button. Focus area selection. Me, 90% of the time, flexible spot placed via the multi-selector. 5% zone autofocus, 5% wide. Really depends on the situation you're in. Custom button one, focus magnifier. In manual focus mode, one of our best friends. Custom button two, peaking display selection. If in manual focus mode, the focus magnifier is one of our best friends, peaking is the other one. With C2, you can now toggle it on and off. So all of this, thumb 
and index finger, this area right here is focus control. Next up, exposure and composition. D-pad, center button. APS-C Super 35 slash full frame selection. Easy toggle between full frame and crop mode. If the zoom doesn't get you there, Super 35 crop just might. And it's still 4K. D-pad, left button. Zebra display select. Best exposure assist feature ever. D-pad, right button. Marker display select. Quick toggle between the rule of third grid and a custom aspect overlay. D-pad, down. Zoom. Clear image only. Neither the lens nor the crop can get you there. The zoom just might. Use only in 4K. If you can move the camera, do that instead. Control wheel, ISO. Just makes sense to me. Custom button for down here under the D-pad, white balance. We talked about this. Multi-selector, center button. Monitor, brightness. Regular for most scenarios. Out in bright sunlight, sunny weather. Beware though, the image then looks brighter than it actually is. Check your histogram, check your exposure. C3, audio rec level. The lower, the better. Your mic has a pre-game to boost the signal, use it. In any case, good audio levels to right above minus 12 decibels. So all of this is focus. All of this is composition and color. And then we got the screen and the audio levels. Focus magnification time, no limit. Camera doesn't tell us what to do, we tell the camera. Initial focus magnification times 5.9. The closer, the better. First main menu, second to last sub-menu, peaking setting. Peaking display on. Just works when manual focus is active. Peaking level high. It's a small display anyway, the higher the better. Peaking color red, always works. Second main menu, sixth sub-menu, third option, Zebra setting. Zebra display on. Zebra level, in my case, a custom setting. Zebras have to be matched to the picture profile you're using. No picture profile, 100 plus. HLG1, 87 plus. HLG2, 95 plus. HLG3, 100 plus. My specific HLG3, 93 plus. S-Log2, 107 plus. S-Log3, 95 plus. Using higher settings than the ones that I've shown you right here disables the Zebra function. Second main menu, third submenu, fourth option. Marker settings. Center on. Aspect 235 to 1. Cinema scope, that's totally up to you and the project you're doing. Safety zone off. No need, broadcast only. Guide frame off. Too obtrusive for me. Rule of thirds grid, much better. Zoom setting. On clear image zoom. Shooting 4K full frame, clear image zoom crops into Super 35 mode. Almost lossless. Don't use it shooting full HD. There's nowhere to crop to. Audio recording on. Now shooting silently in most scenarios. Audio level display on, obviously. Second main menu, second to last sub menu, fourth option, function menu settings. Right here, you can set individual functions for the 12 placeholders the function menu offers. It's accessed via the function menu button right in between the D-pad and the multi-selector. This is what mine looks like. Focus first. Face slash eye priority in autofocus. You don't like people, turn it off. Next autofocus option, subject detection. Animal or human. Then we got center lock on autofocus. Every once in a while, you'll need an autofocus tracking function. This is it. Next up, exposure and color. Picture profile. So depending on the shoot, I switch between, say, an HLG3 profile for less post-production work or an S-Log profile for maximum dynamic range, but more post-production. Gamma display assist. Clients on set are freaked out by flat-looking images. Turn this on to calm them down. Doesn't affect the footage, it's just an overlay. Zebra level. It's next to picture profile because it has to be matched to picture profile. Next up, steady shot. Here you can simply turn it on or off. Every once in a while, fast dynamic movement can mess with the sensor stabilization, giving you correction movements that mess up the end of the shot. In this case, turn it off. Steady shot adjustments. Auto for electronic lenses that communicate their focal length to the camera. Manual for non-electronic lenses. Steady shot focal length. When using a non-electronic lens, tell the camera its focal length. It does make a difference. Second to last, audio signals. If you're alone in front of the camera with nothing but a remote control, it's a great signal. In church, not so much. And now, 
last but not least, interval shooting, aka time lapses. Now this function is only available in photo modes, but since you're gonna produce a video out of the stills you take, the function still belongs in the function menu. Main menu number six, my menu. This is what it looks like, empty. Now you add items, again from a rather long list. Now here's what my my menu looks like. Page one, setting one, format. Night before the shoot, I make sure I got clean SD cards. Then autofocus drive speed, autofocus track sense, marker settings, grid line, peaking settings. When you are faced with exceptional scenarios, you might have to change those. Page two, setting one, airplane mode. It's a power saver. No Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, no NFC. You're welcome. Next up, Wi-Fi settings and Bluetooth settings. Once you're there, it's gonna be a drag either way, sometimes unavoidable. Bluetooth remote control, should you be so lucky to have one? Control with smartphone, phone as a remote control, I've done it. Page number three, setting number one, finder, monitor, monitor manual. EVF I only use to scout the location to get a feel for the shots that are possible. Any other time, external monitor or display. So here I can switch. Next up, rec media settings. As soon as somebody's paying you, redundancy is a good idea. Prioritize rec media, slot one, recording mode simultaneous. So I'm recording the same video to both SD cards. You tell me you wouldn't want to switch universes after just having shot a wedding and then realizing you actually didn't. HDMI settings for external recording only. Timecode settings for syncing multiple cameras. Page four, cleaning mode. Now, if you don't know how to manually clean a sensor, this is not gonna help you much, but every once in a while, it might just save your ass. NTSC PAL selector. If you got trouble with flickering lights, this is probably the root cause. First main menu, second submenu, fourth option, lens compensation. Auto on everything. Less hassle in post-production. Wind noise reduction, off. This is a foam, this is a fur wind muff. Use them. Movie with shutter, on. Just feels natural. Release without lens, enabled for non-electronic lenses. Release without card, disabled. Second main menu, submenu number six, first option, display button. Monitor, display all info, display the histogram, and monitor off as a power saving option. Finder, display all info, display no info, and display the histogram. This way, for both the EVF and the display, you get an all info to check it at a glance and no info to just check the composition. Volume settings, 15. And it's still not very loud. Display quality, high. Now that's EVF display quality. I rarely use it, but when I do, I treat myself. Power save start time. For this video, I set it to 30 minutes, but usually I'm going for two. Auto power off temperature, high. The so German says, keine Berhitzen. USB power supply on. Long time lapse, power bank. File number, series, folder name, date form. The Germans like it, ordentlich. All right, everything's set up. Let's save all the settings to custom one. First main menu, third sub menu, fifth option, memory. Here you can check everything you've set up. And once you're satisfied, just hit the center button. And there you go. All the settings have been registered to custom mode one on the top mode dial and are henceforth easily and quickly accessible at all times. Now let's breeze through setting up custom mode two. File format XAVCS HD. Record setting 120p 100m. Highest quality possible shooting slow motion with the A7 III. Autofocus drive speed, fast. Anything slower than fast will make the focus take forever to hit once the footage is slowed down. Shutter speed, one to fiftieth of a second. Then again, that's highly debatable shooting slow motion. I regularly shoot at one one twenty fifth of a second, getting more light to the sensor and still having nice motion blur. That's it. Let's save these settings to custom mode two. First main menu, third sub menu, fifth option, memory. This time, navigate to two, check your settings, and once you're satisfied, register. Okay, that's it gear, perks, all the good stuff in the description. If you liked the video, if you found it helpful, like, comment, subscribe. If you think you can one-up me, let me know in the comments. Cheerio!